In our lesson, we had an assignment to take this Bach fugue and play it on the organ. So, what did we discover? One of the first things that pianists will probably discover is they had trouble finding the on switch for the organ. Of course, the piano has none, but organ power switches, that's the switch to the wind and everything else, are often hidden. And sometimes they're controlled by a key with a lock. And it's important to know and to ask where that is every time you go into a place and are asked to play the organ. Well, if you're a pianist, you're accustomed to using a sustaining pedal to color the tone, but that sustaining pedal can also give you a false impression of when you are playing and releasing the keys at the piano. Now on the organ, it's going to be totally revealed because the sound of the tone will be only as long as you actually have those keys depressed. The solution and the change here that a pianist has to make is to play a little more deeply into the keys and to know exactly how long they want to depress the key to get the effect they want. Uh, also, this means developing at times a clear legato. Now, in the Bach fugue we had, it's a great example because it's mostly a leggero or quasi-detached style of playing. And you may not have a chance to use too much in the way of legato here, but one other thing that a pianist has to do is to rely on legato purely from finger contact with the keys rather than relying on legato through that plus a sustaining pedal. The next thing we discovered is that we can't vary the loudness of the tone on the organ simply by finger pressure or velocity. Now there's a wonderful similarity here between the piano and the organ because if you articulate with varying degrees of articulation and if you have a slightly elastic tempo, these add in or add back in some of the expressiveness that's lost from not having the dynamic variation on the organ. Slight variations in articulation and the slight elasticity and tempo is something that both the piano and the organ can share. Another discovery you may have made is that you sat at the organ and you pulled a couple of stops and expected to hear those stops when you played, but the stops you pulled may not have actually corresponded with the manual that you were trying to play upon. Of course, you'd hear nothing even though those stops were pulled. And it calls for us to investigate now and explore the layout and the architecture of the organ console. So you may be asking yourself, why do we need more than one manual on an organ? A pianist is likely to ask that question most frequently. After all, a pianist gets along just fine with 88 keys on one keyboard. But the organ has two, three, or many more keyboards, and we can do something that way that's wonderful. We can, we can choose one set of sounds on one manual, another set of sounds on another, and we can alternate both hands on both different keyboards, thus alternating the color, or we can switch our hands up and do that as well and have that combination. It's another way of exploiting the wealth of tone color and the variety of stops and the beauty of all that in music with an organ. In that example, we had a Johann Sebastian Bach transcription of a Vivaldi concerto for two violins and orchestra. The orchestra part was played on the upper manual with a full ensemble sound, and the two violin parts were played on a solo type stop on the lower manual. 
Another way we can use two manuals to contrast tone is when we have a melody in the top manual on certain stops and we put different sounds to play the accompanying counterpoint on a lower manual. It's wonderful to have two keyboards because if you've got a melody here, for example, and a counterpoint melody going against it, and they both want to play in the same area of the keyboard, you can't do it on one manual, but you can do it if you take both of these and put them on separate manuals. Each manual on an organ has a name. It can have any number of different names depending on the style of the organ and the culture from which it comes or the, the type of organ on which it's modeled. On this instrument, the more powerful great style manual is on the top while the lesser powerful manual is on the bottom. Let's go now and take a look at a modern American organ and see how the manuals are laid out. This console has three manuals. A lot of organs have only two manuals, and when there are only two manuals, it would be the great division and the swell division that you have. On a two-manual instrument, this manual would be missing, but the great would be closest to the player, and right above it, the swell manual would be placed. Now, the swell division and the great division, all the divisions have their draw knobs and they're grouped on stop jams and the pipes are placed in separate groups too. They're laid out in an orderly fashion. Two of the divisions on this organ are what we call expressive. That means that all of the pipes from that division are placed in a room and on one wall of the room there are these shutters which resemble Venetian blinds and they can open or close just like a door in a room. If the doors or the shutters that is is closed we don't hear as much and when they're open we hear a lot more and this is what creates the dynamic contrast and expression that's possible from any division that's under expression. The divisions which are exposed or freestanding, that is the pipes are freestanding and exposed without any box around them, in this organ are the great and the pedal division. Now on a four manual organ, we have all three of these manuals, but we have in addition the solo division. All right, so now I've pulled stops on each one of the manual divisions, okay? And we have some stops on the swell, some stops on the great, and some stops on the choir. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we could take the sounds from the swell and the choir and the great and play all of those sounds together by playing only on the great manual? Well, somebody's already thought of that.
And we're going to get to that, the art of coupling, in the next lesson. <laughs>